All right, check. So uh, I tried waiting until my neighbor's dog stopped barking before making this video, but uh, I'm kind of tired of waiting. So if you hear barking, it's fine. It's not a zombie dog. It's a regular dog. I Am Legend, starring Will Smith. This movie was directed by the director of the Hunger Games movies. Uh, I'm not too familiar with those. I saw the first one back when it came out in theaters, I think. Um, that's how familiar I am with the Hunger Games movies. And this stars Will Smith, the Fresh Prince, the Men in Black. Everyone loves Will Smith. And you know, um, there was like a time where I feel like there was a little Will Smith backlash. I feel anyway, that might not have been the case. Around the time where he was getting a little too uh, obsessed with Jada. People were getting tired of him. He used to be Fresh Prince, you know? And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, he started doing more serious films and stuff like that. And he kind of just felt like that friend who used to be super cool and now takes himself super seriously. But uh, I've always liked Will Smith. He's a very charismatic actor. Very talented person just overall. I'm not involved with his personal life all that much. I, maybe I think he did something with Jada lately. I'm not too aware of. But as an actor, I think he's very good. He's very charismatic. Uh, he reminds me a lot of like a Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis in an era where everyone was a big muscle-bound badass. Uh, Bruce Willis slipped through the cracks. He was the everyday hero. And that to me is what Will Smith is. He's an everyday hero. And that's what makes you uh, drawn to his performances. And especially in this movie, I'm just going to say it off the bat. I didn't think of this when I first saw the movie when it came out. But upon rewatching it, I think this might be Will Smith's best performance. Is it Will Smith's best film? No. No, no. Men in Black is better. You can go through his filmography and find better movies in there. But as far as just an individual performance, I think this is his best performance. The movie is basically uh, a remake of, like, Last Man on Earth, I guess. But it really changed a lot during production and it became a zombie movie. So this movie follows Will Smith's character as he's the last surviving person of a zombie apocalypse. And he's trying to develop a vaccine while surviving in this environment. Along with him is his companion, a little dog. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the movie. This isn't like some niche zombie movie like I've been doing uh, often during this review. This was a pretty big movie when it came out. It was right in the middle of the zombie craze of the 2000s. I remember everyone was talking about this movie. Everyone liked this movie. From what I remember, I think like times might have changed and people are like iffy on the movie. Uh, but when it came out, I remember everyone loved this movie. Uh, everyone in my friend group, anyway. So this movie, overall, was very reminiscent of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 to me. Many people hate Spider-Man 3. I'm not one of those people. I understand that there's a lot of studio interference going on in Spider-Man 3, but the Sam Raimi moments shine through overall. And in this movie, I can suspect that there's a lot of studio interference, a lot of meddling, but the positives ultimately shine through, and I think this is an enjoyable movie. Uh, you, the film opens, and it's Will Smith driving around in his muscle car, uh, trying to hunt deer while driving. What you say? What you say? This is like probably the biggest budget that's ever been uh, used in a zombie movie and you can really feel it. You look at the scale of the city. This happens in New York City. The streets are empty. There's vegetation growing everywhere. Zombie movies, the ones I've been reviewing from the 80s have been more like for a niche crowd. So they've been low budget and they always happen in confined areas. And to see a zombie movie that just happens in the open 
and you're looking at these horizons and everything is empty. Um, it really offered a different perspective and I thought that was really enjoyable to watch. Some of the shots were a bit too clean. My friend noticed this out when we were watching it. The car doesn't even have a scratch on it, which is really odd considering that this is a zombie apocalypse. But uh, yeah, some of the imagery does look a little too neat. They could have went for a little more grimy. Overall, just the scale of it, I thought it was really nice. Just watching Will Smith alone with this dog, it's really interesting to watch. And like I said, I really like Will Smith as an actor. And he really can carry a movie if he's the only person in that movie. So he's really, like, that's why I think this might be his best performance, because he's carrying scenes just by talking to a dog. There's also some gut-wrenching moments. Uh, one moment in particular, he's, uh, he has this reoccurring thing where he goes to a video rental store, and when he's in the video rental store, he pretends to talk to the mannequins and pretends that they're real people. Morning, Hank. Your way through the G's. Hey, who's the girl in the lobby? Never mind. Hey, I'll see you in the morning. After the loss of his dog, he goes to one of the mannequins and he said, I promised my friend that I would ask you out, and he's just breaking out into tears. I promise my friend. Say hello to you today. Hello. Hello. Say hello to me. Please say hello to me. Oh, if you thought the dog death. And John Wick was sad. <laughs> honey. Honey. Honey! You, you, you haven't seen anything yet. This one, this one had me. I, I don't get really choked up in movies. But this one was like, oh, God. Yeah. And uh, overall, everything that was character dynamic uh, for the first major portion of the film, I thought was really interesting. This is random. Will Smith is a Shrek fan. For all of you people on the internet who like making memes, there's a scene where Will Smith recites lines verbatim from the hit motion picture Shrek. You was really, really something back there. Incredible. Are you talking to Yes, I was, I was talking to you. Can I just say that you was really great back then? Those dogs, they thought it was all that. Then you showed up and bam, they were tripping over themselves like babies in the woods. See that? That really made me feel good to see that. That's great. Freedom. Man, it's good to be free. Now, why don't you go celebrate your freedom with your own friends? Hmm? He's an OG. He was doing Shrek memes before Shrek memes were a thing. Guys. Y'all thought Will Smith's YouTube channel was a, a little boomery? <laughs> he was ahead of you guys. He did Shrek memes. He knows the movie by heart. So that's all the positives I have with the movie. And that's why I think overall this movie is a positive experience. Where the movie struggles is in, in some weird way its strength. This movie wants it to be a mainstream zombie movie but with that comes some mainstream cliches so you can't have it both ways you can't make like a big budget huge scale zombie movie and then uh, all of a sudden 
uh, there's some weird artsy fartsy George Romero moments in there. You can't have it both ways, and I understand that. But some of the things were very jarring in this movie. Uh, I don't mind mainstream appeal in a movie. I think it's very important to get everyone engaged in your film. Uh, but there are a lot of cliches from mainstream horror movies make their way into this, and it makes it a little less interesting. The main thing that I think studio interference had to do with this movie was everything after Will Smith uh, meets the other character. Uh, once we find out Will Smith is not the only person in this universe, from that point, the movie takes a sharp nosedive. Uh, I didn't care for that character. Then at the end, Will Smith sacrifices himself, and I don't think he needed to sacrifice himself. Like, he throws a grenade. He tells the people to escape while he, like, takes a grenade and throws himself in a bunch of zombies. And I'm like, okay, cool. You can just throw the grenade at them and escape with them. So it just felt like the ending really came out of nowhere and it felt really rushed. And uh, at the end, when the uh, girl is talking and she's narrating, uh, she says that he's a legend. And I never really got that vibe from the movie. Uh, he was only a legend... In the, first, in the last half hour of the movie. Because the first half hour is just him running around, doing his thing, being Will Smith, having a good time, having some heart-wrenching moments every now and then, which is fine, but I didn't see him as a legend. And yeah, that, just that ending, it felt rushed, it felt stupid, it came out of left field. Uh, I didn't like it. I, I don't think... It had anything to do with what the movie's theme was. The zombies in this movie are hideously bad. Um, I w I've been watching zombie movies from the 80s and 90s, and they look really good, and they still stick out as well. And you even watch TV shows like The Walking Dead. The zombies in that show are really well made. You watch something like I Am Legend, and it makes you wonder, like, why did they decide to make the zombies CG? It's really an odd decision, and I, I just don't understand. A lot of it, to me, is that the general public doesn't mind CG. Uh, they've just learned to turn that switch off and be like, okay, it's a computer-generated image. Yeah, whatever. And it could be an easier way out versus having people with makeup and directing a bunch of people on set. But it just doesn't age well, man. It's not... And it, I remember when it first came out, it did not look good either. And it's just gotten worse with time. Yeah, just a weird decision. I don't know why they decide to go with CG zombies, why makeup... I don't know. It's beyond me. Uh, probably the same reason. There's like this great behind-the-scenes documentary of the 2011 The Thing movie, and you have people working with animatronics, and it looks like it's going along the same lines as the 1982 film. And all of a sudden, apparently a producer just said, oh, can you slap some CG on top of the animatronic? And I don't know why producers have that mentality. It could be because audiences think that and they have like a better understanding of it. But f from my perspective, I just don't get it. It's beyond me. Will Smith's character plays a scientist and a colonel. Pick one movie. Like, he's Will Smith. He's charismatic. He's very good looking, he's a colonel, and he's a doctor. A little overachiever here, okay? No one, if this person existed in real life, I'm sure he'd get plenty of women. Um, I'm sure Will Smith does get plenty of women, but this character to me felt like a bit too much of an overachiever. You could have just given him one career. Other than that, a few minor things here and there. There's this really awkward scene where... Uh, they're talking about Bob Marley, and the other girl doesn't know who Bob Marley is. And Will Smith is like, oh, it's Bob Marley. And she's like, oh, are you talking about Damien Barley Marley? 
which is Bob Marley's son. And I've never met someone in my life who knows the son of Bob Marley and not Bob Marley. Um, just felt like a very unnatural scene and a lame attempt at doing a Tarantino pop culture reference kind of thing. But overall, it sounds like I'm harping on this movie. I'm extra critical of this movie because I thought like deep down this movie could have been something really special and it could have been like a movie we all talk about and remember. But these little things, they just like hinder it just enough so that it was like just a really good summer movie. Uh, rather than uh, like a, something like an Iron Man that people are still talking about today. Uh, f- so that to me is why I'm critical of the movie. It's, uh, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. But overall, the movie is uh, maybe like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. Uh, the good things come through in this movie. It's just those hindrances. I'm like, oh, please, just... Someone needs to do, like, a a fan edit of this movie, I think. Please, nerds, on the internet. I shouldn't call you nerds. You guys are good people. Uh, Please, geeks, do a fan edit. I am legend. Try to fix that ending if you can. I don't know. I I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if there's some deleted footage that you can can find on the DVD or Blu-ray, but I would love to see it happen. All right. Stay tuned, guys. Way more zombie movies coming up. Let me save you! Ah!